Welcome everyone to the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. My name is Ayla Azim, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm an intern with Campus Pride. For those who don't know, Campus Pride is a leading national nonprofit that empowers student leaders and groups working to create equitable college environments for LGBTQ plus students. You can learn more at campuspride.org. Today I'll be interviewing Kent State University for the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. This series is all about what campuses offer today's LGBTQ plus students our diverse genders and sexuality spectrum. We will highlight colleges and universities that are providing LGBTQ plus inclusivity on their campuses and learn more about their programs and services. I want to introduce to you the representative from Kent State University now. Hey everyone, my name is Ken Ditlevson. I use he, him, his pronouns and I'm the director of our LGBTQ plus center. Thank you so much for your introduction. It's wonderful to have you here today. Um, your campus has a five out of five star rating on the Campus Pride Index at campusprideindex.org. And you've been ranked among the best of the best in terms of LGBTQ plus friendly colleges and universities. So congratulations. Yay, thank you so much. Um, so to start out, tell us what are some things that are on your campus for LGBTQ plus life? And specifically, what does your campus do for LGBTQ plus students that creates an inclusive space? Sure. Uh, thanks, Isla, for having us. I'm so uh, excited to be here. We do a lot of different things at Kent State. And so in addition to having an LGBTQ plus center where I work, there's a lot of other components across our campus. So it's not just the one office. We actually have half of our halls, our resident halls that are gender inclusive. We also have a living learning community, so an LGBTQA living learning community, which is made up of two floors of one of our resident halls. And that's everyone that wants to live in that hall that's either part of the community, uh, studying our LGBT minor, or as an ally that just has chosen to live in that uh, community. So that's one example. But then outside of that, we have um, a magazine that comes out every year, um, Fusion Magazine. It's one of the only print publications out that's uh, published, edited, created by LGBT individuals. Uh, we have a lot of different financial resources, uh, one piece being we have an emergency fund. Uh, that's something I really uh, love about our campus. Uh, the emergency fund is there for when students face a financial crisis. Um, sometimes it's students that just can't buy their books, but in other cases, it's students that have been disowned after they've come out. And so we're able to uh, put funds into their bursars account so that we can help them stay at Kent State and reach the final line and uh, get to graduation. Um, in addition to that, we do a lot of trainings. We've got Safe Space, Trans 101, Ally Trainings. We've got universal restrooms all over, uh, preferred name policy. Um, we've got counseling staff that are uh, specialized and trained in this area. And then at our center, um, some of the stuff that I'm most excited about every year at the beginning of the fall semester, we have this huge kickoff celebration in our ballroom where we have four to 500 students. And then our president comes in and makes a welcome announcement and our vice president and then myself, and then our student orgs um, get up on stage and share about um, what they have to offer because at Kent State, we have 400 student organizations, but we actually have six that are LGBTQ specific. So it's kind of like an orientation uh, for our new students and our returning students to make sure that they know places that they can go and get active. Um, and it's a big resource fair and kind of a, a fun way to kick off the year. And then towards the end of the year, we always have Lavender Graduation, which is just a phenomenal celebration. We do it in our ballroom again, and it's always filled to capacity with five to 600 people. And so we celebrate our graduates uh, reaching this milestone. They get to walk the stage and thank anyone uh, personally. They get the microphone to thank anyone that helped them reach this milestone. Um, and then families and their found families can come and have a dinner for free. So it's a really huge celebration. Uh, you can check out our uh, social media for some of the pictures. Um, but then outside of that, we've got a rainbow run, which is um, a fundraiser for our emergency fund. Uh, people run across our campus. Oh, there's one of the photos. And at every station, they get different glow items, like a glow tiara, glow ring, glow necklaces. Um, yeah, so it's that's super fun. Uh, people typically aren't all runners, so a lot of people walk it or ride their bikes. 
but it's just a way to really show support to the community and to get involved. And then I'll just say one last thing we've got through our center, something that we call the gay agenda. So every semester we put out this huge list of programming. And like right now we're in the midst of COVID, but we're still doing things virtually. And when it's warm enough to be outside, uh, we're socially distancing and um, doing outside activities to just continue to build community. So we're all about like just making sure that people feel connected and that there's a sense of belonging. But those are some of the ways people can get involved at Kent State. I love that answer. I love the idea of the lavender graduation and the rainbow run. Ah, thanks. Yeah, those are two of my favorite. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much for your answer. Um, what example can you share that signifies the importance of having a space on campus for LGBTQ plus students? Uh, I'll say one example is just uh, the testimonies that we get from students. Um, oftentimes when students leave, they'll send us an email of thanks or even on the stage as they walk for Lavender graduation, they'll walk across the stage and say, you know, I'm so appreciative to the LGBT Center for setting an inclusive environment, um, for allowing me to be myself, allowing me space where I can be myself and find myself. Um, you know, we've had students who have also just expressed uh, thanks because of the emergency fund, uh, students that were disowned from their families and then found their family uh, through our center and through getting involved. Um, so those, those things um, definitely uh, make the job so much more, um, like it lifts us up because we're knowing that we're really connecting. Uh, the other place I'll just say is like in our center on a typical year, we're having like 50 to 60 people come through every day. And so it's a busy hop in place. And then, you know, of course, there's all those other student groups and other places. But I think just seeing our center grow and getting those kind of notes from our students. Um, we used to be, our center, we used to be in a tiny little space that we call the closet. And now it's a huge space that's like uh, 10 times the original space and we call it rainbow heaven. So it's uh, just a real um, visible location right in the middle of the student center. And, um, that's uh, something we're really proud of. That's really cool. Um, like seeing explicitly like students being impacted is really important. Yeah, it really is. It, it gives me goosebumps uh, when I, and we save those because sometimes, you know, our job in working in the community, it just can be rough work. But when we, you know, really realize the impact, it's uh, we, it keeps us recharged so we can keep going and doing this important work. Yeah, definitely. Um, can you please tell us more about your campus's LGBTQ plus inclusive policies and how do students on campus feel about such policies? I'm going to say that there's three policies in particular that really stand out um, that we were really instrumental in helping come together us. And then we have an employee resource group for LGBT folks that also helped with it. But we've got um, universal restrooms uh, that are, it's written into our policy now through our architect's office. So every single building that gets built or renovated will always have a universal restroom. Those are single stall or single locker uh, restrooms where people of any gender can use those and know that they're in a safe place, but they're available for anyone. Um, that took some work. We always had them, um, but it wasn't written into our policy. And so our students spoke up and said, you know, we want to make sure that when that lead architect leaves and he retires, that that stays here. And so we were really uh, glad to see that work written into our policy. Another uh, big win was when we were able to do um, preferred name policy, which I think that's been now three or four years. Um, and that really, prior to us having that, was um, a barrier for students. Um, people were being outed. And so that has been huge. And it's not just for our students, it's also a policy for our faculty and staff. But that just lets people be um, known for their chosen name and how they live. And so um, that was um, probably one of our biggest wins. And then I'll say the last one, we have trans-inclusive healthcare for our faculty and staff, but then outside of that, we've got a supplemental student health insurance that's trans-specific and has a real nice uh, cap with um, how much they'll pay every year. So it's like $50,000. Uh, so those, thing, those three were big wins and, and places that we felt really proud about. But 
I'll just say that's one area that we're going to continue to work on. Uh, we use Campus Pride to help us raise our um, what we're doing. Like we use it as a benchmark. And so in our annual report that we put out every year, um, we always highlight um, the Campus Pride score. And so um, it always, we weren't always a five. We, when I first started, we were a 3.5. And so we use it to continue to raise the bar. And um, it's been really helpful to um, have that benchmarking so that we can show administration that this is best practice. These are things that we should be doing. And so even though we're a five out of five, I can tell you that we're not totally perfect. We still have things to work on and we're using Campus Pride to help us guide where we should improve. That is so cool. That's so cool that like I actually like saw like the improvement. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, like uh, we've got like our last six years and, you know, the last two years, I think we were fives, but it, it was incremental change and, you know, continuing to chisel away where we needed to. So, yeah, thanks Campus Pride for helping us find that roadmap. It was really helpful. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so in your personal opinion, why does your campus feel the need to provide spaces and resources for LGBTQ plus students? Oh, good question. I'll say that I think that it's really important for people to see representation and people like them. And in addition to that, uh, Kent State is really amazing, but in Ohio is really awesome. We've got some amazing parks and amazing museums, but we're in a conservative state. And so having space like this is so critical. We have students that um, are coming from rural areas uh, or high schools and middle schools that just did not have supports or people that were um, there as allies. And so having spaces like this can just really be uh, life-changing and allowing people to find themselves you know, outside of Kent, it's like 30 minutes or 45 minutes to the nearest um, area that has LGBT resources, like an LGBT center. And so having it on campus really just allows people to um, get active in a community, find themselves. We don't ask anyone how they identify when they come into our space. And so um, not having to answer questions and just being able to use the space and find friends um, really has opened the doors for a lot of different people. Um, at Kent, we like really try to strive for everyone to feel welcome. So in addition to our LGBT center, we also have a women's center, a multicultural center, the student accessibility services, and also um, something for um, adult and veteran students. So there's a lot of different areas. Uh, we just really believe that everyone should feel welcomed and that everyone should have a seat at the table. Um, so that's uh, something that I, I also believe in. Uh, when I went, I went to Kent a long time ago, like 20 years ago, and then I um, worked in mental health. But when I went here um, as an undergrad and for my master's, this center didn't exist. And so it's nice to see all of these different options that exist for students. And it really makes a difference. Uh, people can find their place. So if the center isn't their place, they can get active in one of the student groups or in our minor and just uh, finding multiple ways of uh, finding themselves. I love that. I like the like the unity of all these different things into one. Yeah, we I feel so lucky with the um, colleagues across campus, not just with our amazing students, but we've got so many faculty and staff just in all areas of our campus that want to be part of our work and um, are involved in the different components. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So on the same note of student involvement, how do LGBTQ plus students get involved on your campus and do you have active out LGBTQ plus student leaders? Oh, yeah. We, um, I think I mentioned earlier, we do this huge kickoff and um, Last year, when our president uh, was doing the introduction, it was amazing because uh, she came in. It was uh, President Warren. Uh, she has since retired, and we now have a new president. But when she came in, she said, have you ever seen a gayer room than this? <laughs> and I mean, full of 400 students, everyone's roaring. And I, literally, there were students with tears in their eyes, you know, people that just haven't seen that level of support from, you know, all the way up from the president. 
And so, um, you know, when we um, have our orientation for new students, we're always at all of those destination Kent State orientation days so that families can find our table or students can leave their parents and come over and talk to us if it's not safe for them. Um, we also are um, really active in the student org fairs, like all of those six LGBT student groups um, are part of those uh, blast off and uh, those kind of welcome events. Um, I want to mention Pride Kent, one of our largest groups, is the longest continuously running LGBT student group in the entire country. Oh. And so that's something we're super proud about. This year they're celebrating their 50 year anniversary, uh, which is just huge and uh, something that we're super proud of. Um, but as far as like active uh, student leaders, We've got students in all walks of life that are out and proud. And so like our undergraduate student government, our graduate student government, um, our resident halls and the, the leadership positions, whether they're resident hall directors or resident assistants, um, our tour guides uh, will see out and proud folks through our admissions. And um, one thing we always try to do every year uh, is this flashes a pride poster so we always tell people, if you're out and proud, like we want you on our poster. And then we print 3,000 of these and we post them all over campus. So we launch that with uh, National Coming Out Day, uh, October 11th every year. And then we, in our center, allow space for anyone that's on the poster to come sign one poster that goes in our archive. And they can take posters home for their family to be proud of. And they also get the floor if they choose to, to say like what this meant to them. Mm -hmm. um, that's been really, really cool because for, that's a big risk. I mean, it literally is on our social media. It's on our downtown businesses. It's on every uh, academic space. And so um, when we have people that are so out and proud and able to be visible, it helps other people, but it also helps just affirm their own identity. Mm -hmm. And I'll say we include faculty and staff that are out and proud too. So we've had our uh, vice president of our institutional advancement be part of it. We've had deans be part of it and different faculty. And so it just helps like people not feel alone. Like you don't have to be in the closet. Not that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being in the closet. Everyone's in a different space, but we wanna make sure that everyone that wants to be out and proud that there's space for that. And that's uh, one way we do that. That is so cool. I've never heard of a campus that does like that does that. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Well, we struggled this last year with COVID, uh, so we're hopeful to pick this back up and and do a virtual edition if we have to go that route this next October. But we're in our center, and we have students on campus, and uh, we're going to be here as long as there's in-person classes. We're really dedicated to being here for our students. That's so cool. Um, so how are you supporting students across their varying intersections of identity? Well, a couple ways that we try to really highlight that is we've got a couple social groups. So one in particular that focuses on that is our cutie pot group, which is for queer and trans people of color. That's our one of our closed groups. Um, all of our other ones are open, but we really want to make sure that people have space to talk about those unique needs and some of the challenges. Um, outside of that, we do tons of collaboration with our Student Multicultural Center. So right now it's Black History Month. We just did a film Friday uh, talking about Bayard Rustin. Uh, we've got um, another roundtable discussion where one of our interns will be talking about um, other people of color that were part of the community. We also partner with our Women's Center. So we've got uh, Women's History Month coming up and we'll be doing something similar for our Film Friday and our roundtable discussion. Uh, but we really wanna make sure uh, that we're having space for that. I'll just say we also have one other student group called Threads, which is specific for LGBT individuals that are students of color. So a lot of different ways, um, uh, but I'll also say this is part of our strategic plan is to continue to do better uh, we are always uh, striving to continue to meet the needs of our students, and uh, that's one area that we're going to continue to work on. Really cool. 
Um, so you speak a lot about improving for your campus and social mm -hmm. justice and equality and equity. They're, they're constant journeys of progress in themselves. So what's on the agenda for your campus to improve within the next two to three years? Yeah, so we went through a strategic plan um, in January of 2020, and that was with Ronnie Sienlo. Hats off to Ronnie. Um, Ronnie um, created uh, Lavender Graduation uh, and is a huge advocate. Uh, if you don't know about her, do some research. She's amazing. But she spent two days with us. And when we came out of that, we came out with three themes that we really wanted to work on. We had uh, around 30 people from across campus, including our students, that spoke up about where we could do better. And so um, we are going to focus on continuing to be more inclusive in particular with our communities of color, our trans communities. We're also wanting to do better with um, our outreach, uh, with our international students, our athletes, um, our Greek and fraternity sorority systems. Um, those are some areas that um, we're not seeing the numbers that we would hope for. So uh, we're not gonna give up, we're just gonna continue to do uh, intentional outreach in those areas. Uh, so we're focusing on inclusivity. We're also focusing on advocacy. So there is, uh, we're going to continue to work on um, getting more policies passed in particular that are written into our fabric of our community. And then the last one we're going to work on is um, wellness, just making sure that we're focusing not just on mental health, but physical wellness, financial wellness, academic wellness. And so those are the three areas that we're going to really focus on. And then I'll just say one more thing. The two policy pieces that we're really focusing on is um, pronoun usage is something that is really uh, embraced across our university. It's just not captured in any of our systems. Uh, so it's like uh, when we sign into our uh, online platforms with everything being virtual right now, we're not able to add our pronouns. And so we're working on trying to make that change. Um, another one is our employment application. We're doing all this amazing stuff, but when we look at our employment application uh, through our human resources, it's just glaring that we need to do a lot of work. There's only like Mr. and Mrs. is, is some options. And so um, those are some of the areas that we're gonna continue to focus on and, and really trying to make some change so that things will get continue to get better. Really important, yeah. Pronoun usage is, especially having an explicit policy, is really fundamental. Yes, I agree. So, what is the most LGBTQ plus thing about your campus? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say we got this um, queer bell of progress that's in our center. It's this big pink bell. Wish I would have taken a picture and shown it to you. We've named it after uh, Dolores Knoll, so it's now the Knoll. Queer Bell of Progress, but um, every time that we've made an accomplishment or there's a national initiative that passes, we have someone proudly ring that bell and we ring it loud so that everyone can hear it. Um, and so we have a plaque that's up outside of our uh, space where the bell is and we affix it so that no one could ring it except for when we we're meant to ring it. But you know, when we got marriage equality nationally, or we got employment protection, or just on our campus when we got preferred name, or when we got uh, the condom machines put up in our student restrooms, these were all like wins. And so um, we just want to celebrate those, and we want our uh, center guests and our interns to be part of that. And so I would say that's it's pretty queer. If you saw the bell, it's just this big pink bell, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then outside of that, I'll just say our center, I said, is rainbow heaven. And so we're in the student center. And when we tell people how to find us, like if, if they've never been here, or they're a prospective student, we'll say, just come into the student center. We're in room 024 and you won't miss us. You'll see lots of rainbows. And so, you know, we're definitely not like a hidden place or something that you wouldn't know is a queer resource area. And so, um, yeah, we really wanted to make sure that people knew we're here, we're proud of who we are, and we're queer. That is so cool. I love the idea of the bell. That is really yeah. cool. <laughs> Thank you. So to end our spotlight, in three words, how would you describe your campus to a prospective LGBTQ plus student? I'm gonna say inclusive. Um, I'll just say something related to that. You know, with Black History Month going on right now, uh, with it being February, uh, Kent State helped make Black History Month a thing. It used to be a week, 
and our one of our largest groups on campus called Black United Students. They go by bus for short. They created it and made it a, um, a, a month long thing. So that's like just one more thing that we're really proud of. So inclusive, I would say community because we're all about building community. And then I'd say purpose. Uh, we really wanna make sure that our students feel like they've got a role in changing things. And so, um, and then we also help them find like their career, like, and, and help navigate that. So we have a, the Quest mentorship program where we actually pair uh, LGBT individuals with LGBT mentors in the, in the community, that people that have degrees and um, have made it. And so um, purpose, you know, it's sometimes when you're starting off in school and you don't know what you wanna do, it can be kind of discouraging. But um, when you can talk to other queer people that have made it and maybe are a field you're thinking of, it can be really helpful to find out about which companies I should work at or which ones I should avoid and to get some tips from, you know, folks that are out in the work workforce. So those would be my three words, inclusivity, community, and purpose. That is really cool. Very good. When very well said. Thank you. Appreciate that. So um, please share for those watching on your website to learn more about LGBTQ plus life on your campus. And again, thank you so, so much. Um, campus Pride appreciates your hard work and continued efforts to create an inclusive space for LGBTQ plus students at Kent State University. And your work makes a positive difference in so many lives. And thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure interviewing you. Ila, great to meet you. Thank you for what you do. Campus Pride Index is doing really great work. Keep up the good work, y'all. Thank you so much again. Um, so thank you for watching the Campus Pride Spotlight series. If you wish to learn more about this campus or any college or university, you can search for free at the Campus Pride Index org at that's campus pride index org for over 400 plus colleges and universities that have come out as LGBTQ plus friendly. Again, my name is Isla and thank you so much for watching.